Good morning, guys. Yeah, so there's several winter virtual workshops that they are offering. And the first one we're going to talk about is something that we all can get into, and that's smartphone photography. I've got the instructor here, Ellen Sears. Ellen, give me the rundown on your class. Well, we're looking at the cell phone, the smartphone, as a tool that you have with you all the time and how to produce those photos that pop and maybe looking at good com uh, composition practices, time of day, uh, where you are, location, things like that. And you like to talk with your, I guess you, we could call them students, about their why, why they want to learn, why they go to this spot every day to take photos, because you have a why. I do. Um, several years ago, almost five years ago, my husband passed away, and the Parklands was a very special place for us. And so um, after he passed away, I lost that sense of wonder and began to walk the park again and try to discover it. And when um, one morning when I was walking, it was first the spider webs, dew covered spider webs, but then it was a sleeping bee. Wow. A dew covered sleeping bee. And that's my aha moment, that sense of wonder. And then I began photographing the parklands, both macro and landscape. Wow, and explain to people what that means just in case they're not sure. So macro is like this bee or I have uh, getting that nice up close photograph and these are all with my phone. Wow. And a macro is just looking at something a little bit more closely, uh, seeing something in a new way, uh, making the strange familiar and the familiar strange. And so after sleeping bees, I went to snail portraits. Wow. It wasn't <laughs> uncommon to find me lying on the ground <laughs> many but times. You have to be dedicated <laughs> to the shot. You do have to be dedicated and I have to say the Parklands has some very Right. Considerate people that make sure you're okay, too. <laughs> Can you kind of show us, we have some beautiful, I guess, things to take pictures of here at the Botanical Gardens. Can you kind of show us what you do when you take a photo and what you're teaching your students? Sure. So uh, what probably the most important thing is, uh, just having a macro lens helps mm -hmm. me. I have a case dedicated on one phone, and on another one I, I keep a clip, Okay. Uh, which I had on my, phone, <laughs> on my coat. <laughs> but anyway, just clip it on. It's about $10. Yeah. So the thing that you have to remember with a macro is that you have to be up close on your subject. Um, you may lose some depth of focus. Um, you may have to just concentrate on one piece. It might be that small little bud. It could be um, on a bee, it could be the wing or mm -hmm. the eyes. Uh, on frogs, I try to get in up close and take those beautifully gold-rimmed eyes of frogs and toads. And You've got to be willing to get down and dirty, is what I'm understanding. To. Yeah, so a lot of it is observation, and then you're understanding the habits of animals. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll stand there and watch bees, I'll watch spiders on flowers, uh, and you know, it can just be one small square in your right. backyard. It doesn't have to be 4,000 acres. That now, you Ellen, I something. can't have you give away all your tips. We want people to <laughs> sign up for the class. Tell us when the next one is. The next one is Saturday, February okay. 6th, and all it's right. at noon. And it's a virtual class, so we're online.